Hello YouTube and welcome back. You ever wondered how I get these old Gabby plugs so perfect? Or how anybody gets them perfect? Or how to put them in? Or why they look so perfect? Let me bring you right in and show you what I'm talking about. And then you'll see what I'm talking about. On these press-in plugs, you see how that looks factory? There's a little trick to this. And I'm going to show you the trick in today's tip of the day. And we're swedging the little ends on there. And it looks like you, you just took a chisel and that's all you did. Well, there's actually more to it than that. All right, so here's all the tools that I use to put in these little plugs here. What I do is Chevrolet fuel pump rods. If you're in this business, if you're not, go to a machine shop. They throw these away daily and you get these. A Chevy fuel pump rod is the perfect length. It's the perfect material. It is just, and I know some of y'all are thinking this finally a use for some Chevy parts. Stop it. We're not going there. And what I do is I will take and machine the ends of them. I'll even take and machine the ends different sizes because Chevrolets also do change the plugs and everybody has a different size plug so i'll machine the ends here's the one i have for ford fe so i've taken it on a lathe you can also take it on a grinder and machine it down to fit on the inside of the plug one of the tips is you don't want to machine this down where it just barely goes in by the time this per this gets pressed in this is going to get stuck there you're going to be frustrated you're going to be like tom you're going to be throwing this across the shop and we don't want that that's the tip of the day don't act like tom so all right so we're going to push this in and it's going to be looser because when it gets pressed in it's going to shrink a little bit and that's okay i have different ones also if you can see the ends of these tips i'll try to to get in a little closer if you see the ends of these of these chisels these chisels don't go in the chisel box these chisels stay in the area of assembly and they look like chisels and they are chisels what's the difference i've rounded all the ends they're no longer sharp these stay just in assembly these are the ones that i do the swedging with i have different ones to copy the factory ones in there and that's what i use so since they're rounded they're not real sharp anymore it's actually going to swedge the end and move metal we want to move metal we don't want to put a chisel mark on it so now you can see those little lines that i'm talking about and we're going to go ahead and i've already started this one and i thought you know what y'all may want to see this this would be a good tip of the day so i'm going to go ahead and put the block up on the back side and we're going to put these in on the back then this block i could do videos all day because there's tons of these on an fe so let's get to it. All right, here's the ones in the back of the block. And here's one, two, three, four. Like I said, on a Ford FE, charge your customers by the plug. You'd make a lot more money. There's more plugs on this block than I don't think, I don't think the space shuttle has this many plugs. So here we go. There's three, four right here. That will be a good example because I'm going to repeat, 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 and repeat. First thing we want to do, I use a Tabers. Um, you can use RTV. Be careful. You don't want to get RTV inside of your holes. I like the Tabers because it's the way my uncle did it. And, you know, why do I want to change anything? He did it. It worked. It works. Um, I do it. Take a little something and just get it inside the hole there. I don't want it to get all up in there, so I'm not. It's not running down the, the hole. It's just inside of the hole. Look at that. We don't want any oil leaks in the back of the block. When we're doing a performance engine, I'm going to tap these out. We're, we're very rarely going to leave the factory ones. This is a restoration. In a restoration, um, depending on the type of restoration, um, we will leave them alone. I have no problems, but if it's any other kind of performance build, higher oil pressure or anything, I tap these out with a pipe plug and get rid of those. And we're going to put in a plug like this. We're going to put in a screw-in pipe plug, especially on the back ones by the bell housing. Almost always. Does that sound weird? But this is the restoration. So we're doing it the factory way. So we're going to drop in a little plug. 
Let's go ahead and drop that one in right there. Also the size hammer you have, remember it ain't the size hammer you have, it's how you use it. So Tom always says. We're just gonna go barely past, it actually has a stop on this one, so you can't go too far. But, see it's just getting snug, but it's not. I could probably grind a little more or machine a little more on this driver, but that's okay. Another tip, you want to get it straight, just tap it in with the handle first. One more right here. Oh, my hand's probably in the way. I wasn't watching the camera, so this might not be a great video at all. Might end up being a terrible video. Okay. Wedging tool, which is a chisel that I've rounded the edge so it's not real sharp anymore. Go right there. Go right there. Once again, is my hand in the way? Y'all gotta tell me something. I know y'all are yelling at the camera. Move your hand! Move your hand! I heard some of y'all. So. I want to encourage you to yell at the camera and tell me what to do because I heard some of y'all and I moved my hand. See that? Done. Done. Easy. They're not going to come out. Let's zoom in here maybe a little closer. And you're probably thinking, some of y'all are probably yelling, zoom in closer. Look at that. And they look like the factory ones. They have little swedge marks. All we did is we moved the metal. And I need to get real down in here close so that you can see the plugs. And we've swedged the ends, and all that did is move the metal in. It can't pop out even if it tried. Okay, once again, we're back. Look at this up here on top. I don't know if you can see them. One, two, three, four. Up here on the top, there's four little plugs. And we're gonna be, I got a little closer this time. I don't know if I can back up more or not. I use tabers in the hole. Stop it, people. Well, you don't have to stop it, but you know what I'm talking about. I take a little wire and I like to just smear it around and get it all in the little hole. You could use RTV, but be careful. Internal. These are all internal, and if you had an internal leak, you probably wouldn't know. It wouldn't affect anything, I don't, you know. So you don't even need to do that. And then I like to just take a rag and just wipe it off. So I only have it on the inside. And it's not crazy. And you know how we don't like you. Tip of the day, don't use a rag inside your motor. I get lint everywhere. And you know, I get all kinds of tip of the days. Do as I say, don't do as I do. Is that? Dad, is that you? Okay. Got our tool. Remember, use tools, don't be tools. Another tip of the day. I don't know. All right, there we go. If you want to get it straight, you can tap it flat. I'll get it straight. Use your tool. Look at that. It does have a little step inside. Then we have different punches, which is the one that's going to work really good in here. That one is too small. That one is too long. This one is just right. So there they are, installed and swedged. We have our top ones done, bottoms and our back. Remember the up in front. Another tip of the day, FEs, I could do tip of the day all day long on just an FE. You know what's a common problem on FE, tip of the day? Big tip of the day. See this lifter right here? They're fed with oil in this line, this passage. Let me back up a little bit. These lifters are fed with an oil galley right there. 
right? These lifters over here are fed with an oil galley right here. Okay, let me show you something. Up here in the front, this plug is one of the bolt holes that holds the cam plate. That plugs this one up. See here? That's not a plug. Don't stick a freeze plug in here. That ain't going to do you any good. You're never going to have any oil pressure. You're going to wonder why. You did an FE and you'll never want to do an engine again. You know why? Tip of the day, there's a plug inside of here. Tip of the day. Let's get down in here and look. What am I talking about? What is Danny talking about? There we go. See that? Get my finger out of the way. There you go. See right there? That's the plug. Not here. Don't go putting a freeze plug up here. That's not doing a darn thing. That's the hole that they used to put in this plug. So tip of the day, don't forget we have an oil plug right there. All right. Since we're talking about it, let's get her done. Let's just get her done. Tip of the day. That's probably one of the biggest tip of the day besides not using shop rags in your motor and I don't want to hear all these comments about Danny's using shop rags in a motor oh my tip of the day don't use shop rags in a motor now you don't have to comment and you feel like you know tip of the day don't drop the plug down in the distributor hole um, tip of the day that's not good either it doesn't go there okay let's go ahead and get this thing done because I'm ready to do another motor Look at that. Now we're not going to lose oil pressure off these lifters. The way that you'll always know you have low oil pressure and, a, and one side of the engine, the lifters won't have any oil pressure and they'll be collapsed. So if you have just built a motor or had someone build it for you and you have no, no pressure, now you know what it is. Look at that. Have another tool for the tool. All right, that one doesn't take much wedging to do. Tip of the day on FEs. All right, so what have we learned? Tip of the day on FEs, charge by the plug, then you'll make some profit. You know I'm just kidding, but what did we talk about? We talked about the rear cam plug goes aiming backwards on the FE, common problem that not put on backwards. This inside one by the distributor, another common one that's left off, um, the swedging tool, and how to put in all guide plugs, which seems real simple, but it really isn't because I've seen them either not put all the plugs in, especially on an FE, or the rear plug put in backwards. All right, I hope you enjoyed this tip of the day, and we'll see you on the next one, because I gotta get this engine built. All right, since we're here giving you tips of the day, I'm gonna give you the biggest tip of the day. And I know I keep on saying that the Ford FEs and I keep over going on biggest tip of the day is this freeze plug right here goes in backwards. I know you're thinking Ford backwards, makes kind of a little, little sense then once you put it in your mind there. Um, if you're doing a Ford, do everything backwards and you'll be around the money. I'm just kidding people. I'm getting you riled up this morning, aren't I? So the freeze plug goes in backwards. It doesn't go in this way or it'll rub against the cam. A lot of engines have come in after being built just because of that. You get annoyed, you don't know where it's at, it's burning up, you, it'll be all blue back in here. So, the rear freeze plug goes in backwards. Remember, walk backwards when you're walking on a Ford, and you'll be right on the money. Once again, I'm just kidding. All right, put it in backwards. Tip of the day.